This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about what a Bitcoin 6102 attack could look like and also how to protect yourself and your family and your finances. Coinbase's Bitcoin will be seized. This was the video that I made yesterday as part of this discussion and needless to say it was a bit controversial. John of Europe saying here, this might be the dumbest post I've ever seen. You sound like a fool. We don't live in China or Iran known as seizing Coinbase's Bitcoin. You're pathetic. Definitely some strong opinions there. I would say that this comment shows some incredible naivete as well as an appalling ignorance of even recent history. Take Cyprus, for example, which is a beautiful, modern and advanced country. And yet what happened there when the banking system ran into trouble in the early 2010s? Depositors in Cypriot banks lost billions of dollars thanks to what's called a bail-in, where the banks just kept people's money above a certain point and did not return it, but rather use that money to recapitalize the banks. This is a form of overt theft. It's important to remember that the most dangerous type of animal is a cornered, desperate animal. And when governments get desperate, they're no different. They've been known to do some really nasty things. Even in America, which is, I think, what John of Europe in his tweet there is missing, Executive Order 6102 was an order signed by President Roosevelt in 1933, which forbid the quote-unquote hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates. When the government says you're hoarding something, what it means is it doesn't want you to have it, but it wants to have it. And what happened the following year is that all Americans were forced to turn in their gold to the uh, to, to the U.S. Treasury. And even the New York Times got on board and talked about how evil it was to hoard gold and how you should turn over your gold. The way this went down in 1933, FDR confiscated Americans' gold, gave people $20.67 per ounce of gold in central bank funny money in exchange for that gold. And then what FDR and the U.S. Treasury did is they promptly revalued the price of gold to $35 an ounce government theft at the highest level, as I said. And what was very interesting when you go back and read about this is even the Supreme Court did absolutely nothing to stop it. Because when you need it most, the U.S. Constitution will unfortunately not be there to protect you. And if your gold was sitting in a U.S. bank in 1933, it ended up being confiscated. If it was hidden in your house and you kept your mouth shut, then you were probably okay, though you did risk huge fines and jail time. And if you saw where things were headed and got the heck out of Dodge before they happened, you did even better. So do I expect the US government to confiscate all the Bitcoin sitting in Coinbase in 2024 or 2025? Absolutely not. As I said at the beginning of this video, do I think there's a reasonable probability of this happening in the next 10 years? Absolutely, yes. And it's important to clarify, I wasn't really picking on Coinbase. They were my main example because they are the largest custodian for the new ETFs. And even before the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US, Coinbase was holding a huge number of Bitcoin on behalf of its customers. So the US government, if this happens, is not just going to steal it from Coinbase. They'll take it from all the big custodians and exchanges, including Fidelity, Gemini, Kraken, Binance, etc. Don't worry, this it will be similar to Executive Order 6102. You will be reimbursed with some Fed tokens or CBDCs, just like people were paid $20 for gold that the next day was revalued to $35. And what you'll hear and what you'll see in the press, this is perfectly legal and necessary to shore up the US financial system. And then they'll probably add that it's been damaged by Bitcoin and by Bitcoiners, when in fact the US economy has been damaged by profligate government spending and borrowing. As part of this process, they'll probably also ban self-custody of Bitcoin in the US. And that will be much harder to enforce than just taking the money from these honeypots from these big custodians because going door to door in a country with the second amendment asking people for their hardware wallets or bitcoin private keys or recovery seeds is impractical to do at scale fortunately and this is one of the advantages that bitcoin has over physical gold so confiscating bitcoin from coinbase and other large custodians is the natural first step and the lowest hanging fruit which is why i really focused on that in yesterday's video. Now this is pure speculation on my part, but in fact, it may turn out that the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US, in retrospect, their main function may eventually turn out to have been just to allow the US government to create a giant honeypot inside of the US at Coinbase custody, and then just be able to keep an eye on it and seize it when necessary. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Hit the like button, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future topic. Also share this video with a friend or family member. I got a number of questions that were like this yesterday. If the US government does a 6102 on Bitcoiners and tries to steal their Bitcoins and ban self-custody, what is the point of having Bitcoin in a self-custodial wallet since you can't do anything with it? 
And my response to that always is the good news about Bitcoin is that you can hold it yourself. This is what self-custody means. It's kind of a silly word. It just means holding those things which belong to you. Only the governments or the banks could come up with a word like this. But the good news about holding your own Bitcoin is you can take it anywhere in the world with you, even across, across borders in a brain wallet, or you can send it to anyone you please without needing to ask permission. So if you have Bitcoin in a self-custodial wallet, you obviously still be able to send it, spend it, buy things, buy beef, buy wine, etc., using your Bitcoin. And you won't need to ask Coinbase Commerce for permission to send the Bitcoin. After a 6102, any Bitcoin sitting on Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, any Bitcoin you've left on these exchanges will be gone. But the Bitcoin sitting in your own cold storage on wallets where you control the keys will still be yours. And when the US government banned physical gold, turns out those who are able to hold on to their gold did much better, obviously, than those who were forced into holding Federal Reserve scammy tokens called US dollars. This is exactly where the US government stole all the gold. And you can see the performance of the dollar since then in terms of purchasing power has been absolutely appalling. Those who held on to gold had a much better hedge against the devaluation of the dollar. Now, please note that none of this is about breaking US laws today. I personally obey all US laws. I faithfully pay all my taxes so that US government can continue to quote unquote spread democracy by bombing poor people around the world. That seems to be very important to our government. This is not about breaking US laws today. So I would encourage you to obey all the laws where you live but rather this video is more about thinking about where the U.S. is headed and planning accordingly. You have to ask yourself, what do you think is going to happen in the U.S. when the wheels really begin to come off? The Fed is already quite trapped, as we've seen over the last year and a half, because if they keep monetary policy tight, they'll continue to blow up the U.S. banking system and bankrupt the federal government as well through higher interest rates. If they loosen monetary policy, we'll just get another massive inflation spike. And both paths are very bad when it comes to social unrest and possibly civil war as well. And it's important to remember here, blue party is not gonna save you, red party is not gonna save you. This end game, I believe, is already pretty much baked into the cake. When you take a look at where debt to GDP is, has not come down much in the past few years. And once you get above 120, 130 debt to GDP, it becomes very difficult without high inflation to bring this ratio down. And what this means is that when the economy is this levered, when the Fed does raise interest rates, it has an outsized impact and tends to blow things up. So this is a big problem as well as the structural spending deficits that we have and the skyrocketing national debt now above 34 trillion. I remember when I first started making these videos, maybe it was at 29, 29 trillion. So it's just added an unbelievable amount of debt. And these are the structural problems that the US is facing and the political realities that our politicians refuse to confront. Here's a question from Black Swan Don, great name. I have some Bitcoin in Robinhood self-hosted cold storage wallet. Do you think that will be confiscated too? My response to him was, they say they're holding it in cold storage, but they may not be. They may also re refuse to give you your Bitcoin when you ask for it. Robinhood treated its customers very, very badly during the GameStop saga. You can go see the recent uh, movie or documentary about that. If you're not holding your own private keys, you have no control. So it's nice that Robinhood has some cold storage, but what we're talking about here is holding Bitcoin in your own cold storage, not trusting someone else with it. And in a 6102 situation, of course, Robinhood would be forced to turn over their Bitcoin as well. So again, it's great that Robinhood Crypto holds the majority of your coins in cold storage, but you still do not control them. And you need to ask permission to move them when they're sitting at Robinhood or Coinbase or Kraken or anywhere else. So I'd encourage you to get a Blockstream Jade wallet, get a cold card wallet. This is the, the right way to hold larger amounts of Bitcoin in cold storage and hold them offline. A lot of you asked as well about the Coinbase wallet. This is a software wallet that is not fully open source. And so I don't think this is something you should trust in a situation like this. There may be backdoors that allows Coinbase in the event of a government order like a 6102 to drain these wallets. And if you don't trust Coinbase for one thing, you shouldn't trust them for anything. Question uh, from Snooky Wazo. I agree, but at the same time, I wouldn't feel great about holding my wealth in an illegal asset if Bitcoin is ever delegalized. My response, would you feel better about holding a US dollar CBDC, US dollar central bank digital currency that could be turned off on a moment's notice or programmed so that you can only buy government approved things like cricket burgers. This is the really stark choice that I hope we never have to make, but a choice between fiat CBDCs and Bitcoin. Even if Bitcoin is illegal, if you want to survive, if you want to protect your family, you're probably going to want to hold 
Bitcoin. And it shouldn't be illegal to hold something like this. This is not a toxic weapon. This is not anything like that. This is just money that helps to store our economic energy and it's ethical money at that. A question from Linda Lagana, 5954. So Matt, my question is, if they seize the Bitcoin off exchanges and from the ETFs, how are we safe? I live in the USA where I need to pay for everything in dollars. How will I be able to convert my Bitcoin to dollars if I send some back to the exchange and it's confiscated, been hodling since 2012? Thanks. In this situation, obviously, you don't want to send anything to the exchange. That's what happened to some of the Canadian truckers. They sent their Bitcoin to the exchanges and it was confiscated. So you obviously don't want to send it into the black hole there. But uh, my response to Linda, at that point, you and I would be considered criminals in our own country of birth. You would still theoretically be able to buy goods and services from people who want to be paid in Bitcoin, sort of off-grid, you might say. But you could get in trouble if caught. Moving to a more Bitcoin-friendly jurisdiction would be another play. I hope it never comes to that, but it might. A final note, a Bitcoin 6102 attack is actually, I would say, incredibly bullish for Bitcoin's purchasing power and fiat price, but obviously only for those who control their own Bitcoin. If it's been taken away from you, you cannot benefit from this. But I would say that when the world's most powerful government decides to hoover up as much of your asset as possible, that is not bearish for an asset's price. When gold was banned, its black market price went up. When pot was banned in the US around the same time, its black market price went up. So your Bitcoin being held in self-custody would be safe in a situation like this in a 6102. The larger question, and this is the uh, perhaps the more disturbing side of things, is whether you and your family, as bags of flesh that inhabit space and time, will be safe. And that's a completely different question. That's a question of safety and security. And unfortunately, there are no, no easy answers for that. Sometimes, as I said, it's just better to get out of Dodge than to stay and fight when a, when a system's collapsing and when the inevitable uh, problems have to work their way through the system. I'd say the important thing is to keep looking for warning signs and looking where things are headed. And there's still time to prepare, get your house in order. I would also add on a more optimistic note that we Bitcoiners are growing more numerous and wealthier every day. And we're at this point truly a global tribe. We need to begin to assert our power in every area of our lives. And to add to this, the more people we can get to join the Bitcoin tribe, the safer all of us will be. This is what Corey Clipson has spoken about in his essay, The Race to Avoid the War. We Bitcoiners are in a race, perhaps the most important race we will ever run. We're racing against time to drive the adoption of Bitcoin as fast as we can. We're racing toward a future in which the US government never coordinates a concerted attack against Bitcoin and Bitcoiners. This is a race to avoid a war. So the idea is if we get enough Bitcoiners in the US, then the government will not attack. And I think this is the most hopeful path. I'm not completely hopeful though that we will get there, but time will tell. If you enjoy dyst dystopian fiction, you might enjoy this book, which I've covered before called Mandibles, which talks about hyperinflation and how it affects an extended family in the US at some point in the future. I wouldn't say this is exactly how things are gonna play out, but it's a very clever book and a very nice thought experiment about what these sort of things could look like. And there is a form of a 6102 attack that takes place in this novel as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.